I remember presenting this to one of the supermarkets and they said, where do you import this from? Who is the producer? I said, no, we don't import this. They said, come on, you import this. You can't have a good product like this in Cote d'Ivoire. Wow. Because our product was better than all the products they were stocking. Coco Planet is a social enterprise owned by young Cameroonians and Ivorians. And at Coco Planet, we convert coconut waste into clean, burning charcoal. At Coco Planet, we have a throughput thread solution that has to do with getting the coconut waste off the streets. This is waste management, converting to clean energy, and providing access to energy while reducing deforestation. We're producing a very, very exciting product that burns longer, burns cleaner, but also very, very affordable for the average African. The revolution is happening. I get super excited whenever I see young Africans putting their differences aside and start working together to achieve a common goal. The goal is to build Africa together. The goal is for us to work together. And what is happening in here today makes me feel super excited to share this story with you all. You know what? When I get excited, you all need to do me a favor and help me. First of all, like this video now. Thank you. You like the video? Can you help me share this video? Because I want a lot of people to see this video. Share this video now. Thank you. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Wadamaya, the one and only annoying village boy who is on a journey to change the negative narrative of Africa. So please, subscribe and be part of this awesome channel. You won't believe that a young African from Ivory Coast and Cameroon put their resource together to convert this which is what a coconut task and convert it into a charcoal and you know who inspired them i mean from god the man himself <laughs> so come on man ah, no 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 come no, on you're the, big one. you're the big one you're the big one <laughs> bro yo maya <laughs> Friend. No, you know, like, I'm so inspired. Thanks, my brother. And I want you to inspire many out there. And they're so amazed through my videos. You know what? I, I can't stop making these videos because the impact is incredible. You know what? We are in La Côte d'Ivoire, so grab a chilled water and come enjoy this juicy episode from your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana. Baby, let's go. Through Africa. It's really unbelievable knowing that an Ivorian and Cameroonians are working together. Because right. I, I feel like you guys are just like Ghana and Nigeria. Right. <laughs> Who has the best jollof rice? Who has the best jollof rice? <laughs> Maybe the internet war, or is it not the same? No, for, for, for here it's like who has the best the best football team, who has the best uh, <laughs> de Calais, I guess. So there's this whole narrative that Cameroons and Nigerians don't get together but, and, and Ivorians, but the truth is that we are like brothers and sisters. We love each other. We fight every now and then because it's just part of human nature to fight with your sibling, but we are just a big family together, that, just like the Nigerians and Guardians. That, that, that's true because we, we lack in Dole and they like Acheke. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spend a week without Acheke. I'm going to go sick. <laughs> but, but do you guys have Acheke in, in, in Cameroon too? Yeah, we do. Uh, we, we prepare it differently. Yeah. It's not exactly, we don't call it Acheke though, we prepare it differently. And do you know that we have Acheke in Ghana too? Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> You guys are shocked. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we eat acheke in Ghana. Oh, okay. oh interesting. Yeah, so the enzymes mm -hmm. make acheke. Right. Okay. So the whole Ghana, you can actually find acheke anywhere. Okay. Oh, great. You know, each time I visit Ghana, I'm either having some nice uh, wache or banquet. I, I exactly. never heard about acheke in Ghana. Really? <laughs> yeah. So okay. next time I go, I, I'm, I'm going to acheke. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and, and what's the, the local name of acheke? Acheke. Acheke. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, we call it Acheke. So I, 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 I came here recently and I saw Acheke and I'm like, okay, that's Acheke in Ghana. So I, I tweeted okay. that Acheke. Oh, I saw that Ivorians roasting me, man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> roasting me online. Who has the best Acheke? No, they didn't say who has the best Acheke. They said I didn't spell it right. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's how, we, that's how we spell Acheke in Ghana. We are so proud of our Acheke. Oh, that, uh, oh yes. Anyway, yeah. I, I mean... I'm so glad that we put our differences aside and you guys are, I mean... Working yeah. together. Working together. That's right. incredible, man. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. That's how it should be. Yes. You know what? The fact that you guys converted a coconut husk yes. into a stainless um, charcoal. Right. That's incredible, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Whose idea is, is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, to be very honest, Joycelyn is the brain behind this brilliant idea. Um, Joycelyn shared with us her beautiful story of her mom who grew up in the urban area, in the rural area. Mm. And just like every woman in the rural area, they have to leverage firewood and charcoal for cooking. This is the main source of energy in, in Africa. And Joycelyn wanted to address this problem. Why? Because uh, even though charcoal is the primary source of energy, when it's poorly prepared, you end up in a smoky environment. Up to a million women in Africa die from indoor pollution. But also, um, we, we, we went by beyond just the impact on the health, but also the impact on the environment. Today, there's mass deforestation. Every year, over 4 million hectares of forest land is gone for deforestation. Hmm. And we think it's just owing to mining and construction and development, but also the consumption of charcoal by Africans. So we really wanted to come up with, 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 with an alternative and, uh, to that solution. And maybe Justin can touch a, a, a little bit on how she came up with this brilliant idea. You, you and have to tell me that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I watched my mom had to cook with firewood or wood and wood charcoal and I, I watched her suffer a lot with her health and not only her even those my friends their elder sisters they suffered a lot because women are those who are mostly in the kitchen they suffer a lot with their health and when I moved to Ivory Coast I noticed that it was the same problem here the same problem here and I was like how can we help this how can we produce clean energy for cooking to help women from dying young or having health problems and so um, I noticed that in Ivory Coast we have a lot of coconut waste being dumped around <laughs> and, and so it, it was like it was like I won a lottery <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, wow, this is it. I have been looking for, in Cameroon there's coconut, but it's not that much. Yes. So here yes, in I Ivory Coast, it's like God just poured it here. So right. I was like, I won a lottery yes. and this is it. I've been looking for this, this is it. Yes. And so I had to like form a team. Yes. I can't do this alone. Right. So I she brought in. She needs some <laughs> Exactly, she needed some muscles. <laughs> I had to I had to bring in Samuel with the marketing background and he knows his way how to swim around making this a better thing for us and I brought in Harrod who is the engineer guy he knew how to bring in machines how to yeah the processes and also an Ivorian that can help us you know get our feet on the ground. And also to put our hands to the nonsense talk about Ivorian. About Ivorian. Prove everyone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> because Harold is the brain behind all the processes. Wow. What work where do we source our machines? He has yeah. to scan about a hundred, uh, hundreds of suppliers in China. But I'll let Harold talk about that uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So when Justin came up about uh, this idea, it, it echoed to me because if you take statistics in Africa, you see that. 22% um, of the death caused by lung infection are caused actually by, by wood charcoal, right? right. Every year, 8,200 people die from this kind of infection. So it was for me something very important, a challenge that we needed to, to achieve together. So when they brought the idea, I was like, okay, uh, I, 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 I would do it. Wow. So thought of the processing, how we can, what machine we could use, how we can have the right mixture, what is the, the, the right secret to make the perfect charcoal for the population. So my, my, my next question is like, how did you know that you can convert a coconut husk into uh, charcoal like this? So I, I, I remember 
uh, why Justin said when she came here, she saw uh, uh, um, like a gold mine because back in Cameroon, uh, women use fire when they have done consuming the coconut, they just take the shells and throw it into the fire. And we're surprised that, wow, why did they do this? And they will realize that it burns better than wood. It's almost like coconut husk has got its own special gas that inflames the coconut, the biomass even more. And then even here in Cote d'Ivoire, if you go around Bassam, where I have lots of the women who sell smoked fish, this is what they use in, you know, igniting their fire, those who cook in the rural areas. And then we started on trying to understand. So if they can use this as, as a substitute for firewood, mm. can we also use this as a substitute for charcoal? And we started brainstorming and, and Harold came in with his engineering background on how can we carbonize coconut waste through the process of pyrolysis to ensure that it doesn't turn to ash, but rather it turns to char. And now that char can now be processed by crushing and mixing with the binder to come you know, with, okay. with the final product. Harold, if you want to add something, you're the, you're the engineering <laughs> brain here. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So, so we, we do similar thing here, like someone said, people yeah. will throw the, the, the ask in, in, in the fire. If you go around Bassam, you see that people are actually, are actually doing that. So the idea was, was coming up with a bright process, right? right. Instead of the, that traditional way, come up with something that is a little bit more professional, mm -hmm. something that is mm -hmm. clean, that mm -hmm. you don't get dirty with, that people even in, in, in town, like middle class would use without like without any problem so we did some researches uh, we look from 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 people uh, who can provide those machine and uh yeah this is how we, we yeah, work it yeah which means that you guys have to put your own resources together in terms yes. of funding right yes right so right. yes that, that's a very good point because one of the biggest challenges to to start up in africa is funding and it was a reality for us uh, we didn't have access to any funding you know, so we had to pull our resources together. Myself, Joyce, and Harold, just the three of us, brought our funds together and say, how can we start? And this is where Harold's brain was very important to say, hey, this is the budget we have, right? We cannot be as big as some of the big companies like Kingsford, but how can we leverage the, the minimal resources that we have and build a process that is aligned with our budget to be able to produce a quality product that can serve the local market, but also we can export because it took just a little time for us to start getting a request from um, international customers, I'm sure we're going to get there, but we have to really work with our own funds and then make do with the resources we have without, you know, waiting for anyone, really. How long has this factory been in existence? About two years. For two years. Yes. Yeah. It's, wow. it's, it's, it's really it's difficult young. For, for, for young company or for, start, for companies starting to have finance or funding from banks. It's, yes. it's really, really difficult. Mm. So we had to so, start. So you guys did not get any funding from the banks? No, no we didn't get any funding you know, from the bank. No I, financial institution, not government. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I, I think um, three years ago, uh -huh. I interviewed a young man in Ghana who also converted a charcoal, um, coconut husk into charcoal like this. Uh -huh. Yes. And he told me that he uses school fees. Yes. So <laughs> I, thought, I thought you guys used school fees. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, Zako. That's uh, a good word. Zako, Zako, I mean, Zako. yeah. Zako. Yes, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, and we, we learned to be very fair. We learned a, lo a lot from, uh, from, from Zako. Really? In fact, when we started uh, setting up this operation, we reached out to him. We said, hey, we saw your video on, on YouTube with uh, Mr. Wodemeyer. Can you come, you know, guide <laughs> us? And, you know, this is what they say. They say Africans don't work together, but that is change, changing yeah, because Amit changing. flew all the way from Ghana, came and okay. spent a week with us and helped us to put in place our processes, our mixtures and yes. everything without charging are, us are without me? charging us anything. No, we're not kidding. You mean anything. I mean came here? I mean came, came to here. America. He came to America for a week and help us set up. So and you guys got to know I mean through my videos. Absolutely. Right? Hey, hey, I know I mean did not charge, but I'm charging. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me the money. Yeah. Yeah. Half of I mean. <laughs> we'll get some chicken for you to uh, go back. <laughs> that, that, that's incredible. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so does it mean like did you guys see I mean before? So you know your video really brings Africans together. There are lots of African businessmen that have come together because of your video. Someone sees what another person is doing and say, Oh, I never knew someone in Ghana or in Africa or Cameron does it. Now I can reach to them because what am I as channel showcase wow. this person wow. so through that video we saw Amin and we were able to reach out to him and uh, <laughs> made this happen so we're family <laughs> so because of this right yeah, yes let's do this yes are you guys exporting this already so we're exporting this already and we're looking forward to more export partners because it's a huge demand there is this misconception that 
only Africans use charcoal. But mm -hmm. I lived in Germany and worked in Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany alone so used good. more charcoal than any African country. They are yeah. the biggest importer of charcoal in the world. So there's a huge demand on the international market. And we're, re we're, we're really ready to export as well. Please. The numbers are on the screen. The right. emails are there. Do you guys have a website? Yes, we have a website. Yes. We have an Instagram page. You can reach us. You know, we're very active on social media. Yeah. We have our numbers, our emails. You can reach us. Yes. Everything is going to be on the screen. And for for the what you guys have done, I think everyone must share this video. Right. So that people will get to see them. So by the time I come back here in two years' time, right. this factory needs to be bigger than Amin's own. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see that yeah. Africans are supporting and helping each, each other. Correct. Yeah. I, I feel like the revolution is happening. Right? That's, yeah. that's how it that's should be. We have to collaborate. We are just one big family. We've been separated in countries and tribes. But the truth is, we just want massive melting pot. And we just, we just have to collaborate. There's no other way. Yeah. That's, what, that's how it has to work. I know there's somebody watching this video and they'll be like, he or she can't believe that you can convert yeah. a coconut husk into this. Right. So I don't know if one of you can take me through the process, yes. right. what of happens course. in here, and then we'll take you from there. More yes. than happy. Thank More you. than happy to do that. <laughs> Harold is the man. <laughs>
Also, it's important for us to have a to have a story where we have raw materials because it means that we can produce in dry season, in wet season, in any season we can produce. Yeah. Any customer who is ready to do some export, we are ready to produce anytime. That's why we, we, we build that story. Yeah, so you have stock, yeah? We yes, have stock. we have stock, yes. So when we finish burning, this is the this is the finished process, the trial oh, we have, okay. right? So you crush it? We crush it, and we have we have a fine powder here. Yeah. We have the fine powder here. Yeah. From now it's it's, it's 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 dirty, right? Yeah. But when we finish the process, the, the, the finished product, you see that it's a it's clean product. Clean product, right? So we take the we take the the powder, we bring it into the mixer here to mix the product. Mix. So we mix it with starch, cassava starch. Yeah, right. cassava starch. Yes, okay. right. And 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 the reason why we are doing that is because we want to very produce a very clean uh, very clean product Organ right? organic product too organic product no chemicals no chemicals nothing yeah right so the covers the cassava starch is used as a binder yeah right? so we have the powder to make it like compact like this mm. we okay. need to put the starch okay. yes so we mix it with the starch and then from there we go to the press yes so it's conveyed through this are you, are you guys bed. using starch because in Cassava is everywhere. Yes. Yeah, can I use Absolutely. cassava in front of me? I yes. hope you guys do not plan that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we were saying that young it, entrepreneurs can always use what is around them, yeah. right? Yes. When people think, what can we use as a binder? They start thinking about chemicals. Here, everyone consumes cassava. The staple yeah. field here is a check, which is a yeah. cassava based starch. Yeah. Yeah. So we leverage that. And once it's mixed, like Harold said, the product now takes a trip on this conveyor belt and drops into the mixer. So we have we have two products, right? You have those two in your hands. Yeah. Yes. So we have this one and we have this one. So this one is made with this uh, press yes. and this one is made out of this press. Yes. So depending on what the, 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 the customer wants, we can provide either of these uh, of this one. Yeah. Hmm. Is it manual or automatic? It's automatic. It's automatic. It's automatic. Machines. The only thing yes. people do uh, when the product up. is coming from this compressor, the, these people will just pick it up put it in the trays, trays and then we send it to the oven. How many, how many bags do you guys produce in a day? Ooh. So we produce a ton and uh, we produce a, a ton an hour. Yeah. So on a on a typical production day we'll produce about five to seven tons. But if we have a huge demand, mm. all we need to do is increase the workforce. So here on a typical day we have an average of five we have five people working here, five mm. production staff. Mm. Mm. But if a customer says hey I want a 40 foot container next week, we're gonna get about 15 people in here so that there's more hands to get the work done. So I, I really, a ton of day. I really want to see the finished product. Yes. Right. Can I, can so from, from these trees. Uh -huh. Oh, from I, think, I think, does it not get wet because you have starch in there? Exactly. Yes. So because we have the starch in it, we have to get it dry. Yes. Ah. And if, if, if you look at the, the wood charcoal, the reason why you have smoke is because of humidity. Correct. Right? Correct. So what we're trying to do is to remove the humidity. Yes. So that when the product burns, there's no, there's no smoke. Yes. I, I remember one time um, a, a customer saw uh, one of our big photos uh, on, on social media and they reached out to us. It was in the rainy season. When I gave them a sample of the product, the guy said, hey, listen, I want, I want 50 bags. And I said, why, why do you want? I said, I just want to understand. I was happy, but I want to understand. He said, no, I bought about 100 bags from the wood charcoal sellers and all of it is wet and I cannot use it. Yes. So we all year round, we can supply a dry product because the finest of our product is from the oven so the products come in pitch dry yeah. and they're ready for usage no smoke do you guys also sell it within the country yes correct right so, now we have a lot of customers around by some hotels yes. like big hotels yes. The, 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 yes. 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 yes 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 so like they say charity begins at home for yeah. us the goal was to serve the local market first before venturing to the international market so we started by serving households from a social perspective hotels, restaurants, and then our international markets. I will introduce you to, is it Udali or Mbali or, what's the name of the restaurant? Where, where is it? Udali or Udali? Udali fast food? Yeah, Udali oh, fast food. Oh, yeah. no, Dabali. Dabali. It's in Zonkat. I will introduce you to Dabali fast food. Great, that'll From be great. From now on, what's Dabali? 
Yes. Since you are supporting African owned businesses, right. it's a must for you to buy your charcoal yes. from them. Exactly. <laughs> you see, I gave you guys business. I need my share. <laughs> Thank so you. This, is a, this is a heater, huh? Yes. Yeah, so this, this, this is the oven. This is what we call uh, we're the doing oven. some maintenance today, but this is this is the oven. Yes. Yes. So wow. we're, we're, we're doing some maintenance. So you see the trays you've seen there. We put it here, put the product here, and now we have to put it in the oven. Yes. This is how the oven looks like. Yes. Right. And we have to dry the charcoal for, yes. for eight so hours. So every hour we can have a ton out of here. Yes. Every hour we can have a ton. Yeah. Yes. Drive for how many hours? Eight hours. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's a long process, right? Yeah. But wow. we need to make sure that we have very, very less water content in it. Yes. So we try to we try to achieve a moisture content yes. below five percent because the local market doesn't mind, mm -hmm. but the international market they've got standards, right? The average is a moisture content of not more than five percent. So we try to uh, conform with that with the standards. Yes. So this is the final package? This is the final package. This is how it looks like. This yes. is how it looks like. Why a the beautiful Planet? Great question, sir. I'll take that. So, the brand is two words. It's Cocoa and Planet. So, to keep it simple before going into the details, it's using coconut to save the planet by producing an eco-friendly product. Hmm. So, recycling waste to energy. Hmm. We're saving the planet. We're providing access to energy. And we're saving hmm. the planet. That's why the name Cocoa Planet. That's incredible, right? right. Yeah. Go standard of your barbecue, please. Go standard of barbecue. Chicken barbecue, all of that. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you, so, can you tell me what is so unique yes. about your product? Great. So, the, the couple of things that are unique about our product. Yeah. Number one is that our product burns cleaner with no smoke. Sometimes the customers think it's magic, and that's why they think we put chemicals. We always invite people to come see our processes. It burns cleaner with no smoke. It burns longer. So wood charcoal burns for about 35 to 40 minutes. This can burn up to three hours, yes. nonstop. Wow. So it burns cleaner, it burns longer, but most importantly, we do not cut down a single tree. Everyone else cuts down trees in this country to produce charcoal. We have no business with trees. Yeah. We just leverage waste, so we have a strong social impact. We have a strong economic impact because we're creating jobs. And we have even a strong business impact because we're pumping money back into the system just from ways that everyone else is ignoring. Yes. This is what's so special about Cocoa Planet. Where can we get some of this product? Good. So today we sell Cocoa Planet in, um, in supermarkets in Abidjan. So if you go to City Dia, you find our product. If you go to Bon Prix, you find our product. You can order from, from our Instagram page, Cocoa Planet Africa. You can email us on coco.planet.africa or you can use the numbers on the screen and reach out to us. We can deliver directly. We, we're trying to expand our footprint in the country by getting into more supermarkets, but we also sell directly to restaurants and households because those are B2B customers. They reach out to us, they buy in big quantities. We do free delivery to all restaurants and hotels in Abidjan. And for international customers, we're also having uh, contracts with sh uh, shipping companies who are ready to take our products to the masses abroad, be it in Europe, America, or the Middle East. Yep. I, I, I want to ask you guys a question. Right. When you hear the name Africa, right. what comes into your mind? All right, I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so when I hear the name Africa, I mean, for being African, first is, is pride. I'm proud of being African. But also I see development. I see youth. I see those people taking the step of entrepreneurship and developing the continent. Right. That's what I see. And, and you see, when we started this, 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 uh, this, uh, this business, we, we called Amin and we leveraged a lot of Amin's experience. Right. And the way we Africans are collaborating together, and it makes me very proud of being African and, and, and hear the name of Africa. Wow. Good. So for me, when I hear the name Africa, <coughs> I think of one thing, blessed land. Yeah. I think Africa really means a blessed land. Blessed people because you have great, warm people, but also we are so blessed with resources, human resources, natural resources, mineral resources. I think there's a lot that we can achieve as Africans if we can just open our eyes and see the opportunities around us. Who thought that you could really leverage waste and convert to a great product that people want to import from France, yeah. from Germany, from America, we're being contacted. People don't even know our factory is this small. The thing is a massive, you know, 10 acres factory, but it's just a factory on, on the 500 meters square. So Africa has a lot to offer, and I think that young Africans really need to open their eyes and see that. If you're patient, you get that. Uh, 
Are young Africans not opening their eyes yet? So I think that a lot of them are. I've seen your channel. I've been I've been super inspired by the great entrepreneurs yeah. you are you you're, you're showcasing, and this is what's inspiring us. And I hope many other Africans. But there's still a lot of Africans who don't really believe in Africa. They think these are just isolated no. cases of people. No, there are a lot of Africans who don't believe in Africa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. If you have a message to those Africans who don't believe in Africa, yes. What would that message be? I think I need to allow you to answer that. <laughs> right. Uh, please answer it well for me. Yeah. <laughs> what What do unbelievers need to do? <laughs> okay. If. Um, there are still Africans out there who don't believe in Africa. I'll tell you, you're making a big mistake because right. this yeah. Africa is like a treasure's land. Yes. It's full of so many. I think, I think we, we, we really have to stop important things right. because I think everything can be found in Africa. Right. Everything can be found in Africa. Every day in Africa, if you watch the news, yeah. we have one or two di discoveries. Africa is blessed, super blessed. All I think is that um, more youth should watch channels like yours to get inspired, <laughs> get yes. educated. I think, I think these guys are advertising my channel today. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> get educated and then um, make use of your environment because yes. you, can, you, you can lift uh, or you can move a, a, a step higher Yes. If you can think about your environment, look right. around yes. and you see that there's something you can take from there yeah. to make it something big. Yeah. And, so and I, mean, I know, believe so much in Africa. These are three incredible Africans yes. that have put their differences aside to help build Africa together. Right. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. And Thank if you. you are proud of them, can we just share this video so that a lot of people can have access to this video? Because if people get access to the videos, by the time I come back, me... I, I'm more happy to see you guys. What are you guys gonna come up with in the next ten years? Great. Uh, because we have a lot of projects in the park. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <From Coco. laughs> you know, yes. what, if you have a message, yes, to Africans living in the diaspora. Yes. You live in the diaspora. Before. I live in yeah. the diaspora. I studied in the UK. I worked in the UK. I worked in Germany. I worked in Hungary. And uh, so I've been there. And you still came back? I, yeah. no, no doubt about it. Uh, is something wrong with your brain, man? <laughs> <laughs> For how long? You know. Hey, come, come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get closer to me. Yeah. You speak so, French? Yeah. If, if you translate yeah, for him. Yeah, translate I want to give you, if I give him visa, yes. I take him to America. Yes. Ask him if he's going to come back. Le monsieur te demande si tu as un visa pour aller aux États-Unis. Est-ce que tu vas retourner en Côte d'Ivoire? Faut de la vérité. Faut de la vérité. Faut de la vérité. Sois à l'aise, c'est bon. Bien sûr, il va me retourner en Côte d'Ivoire. Tu vas retourner? La Côte d'Ivoire, c'est chez moi. Ah, 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 I love that. He said, he said, he's going to come back because Côte d'Ivoire is home. Oh, wow. Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, oui. 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 <laughs> you know, there are so many Africans that get opportunity to live abroad yes. and they'll be like, you know what, there's yeah. nothing to do back home and I'm not coming back home anytime yeah. soon. You know, you guys came back. You're, you're right. When I was in the UK to do my MBA, I, I, I met a couple of friends, you know, even from my country, Cameroon, which is uh, one of the poor countries, poor countries, because this is what they call African countries, mm. because we are, we, we are not developed infrastructure wise. They call us poor, but we have all the resources. And sure. they said they can never go back. And I sure. thought this was crazy. Sure. For me, I wanted to go back immediately. I think there's nothing wrong with going abroad because there's a lot we can learn in terms of technology and all of that. But I think that it, it, I think it must be a primary goal of every Africa to bring the, that knowledge back home, that know-how, and grow our continent. And some of the videos you're sharing are just mind-blowing. You know, I've seen uh, uh, entrepreneurs who the mechanized agriculture, entrepreneurs who've blown up real estate in Ghana and this is exactly what we're doing. We all, you know, spend time abroad at one point. Howard has worked in India, Justin has been in France, I've been in the UK and we all came back and want to develop. And the plan is that we study small now, but the, the, the thing is we wanted to understand the market and they were going to now open the doors to investors. This is something that can be massive because the demand is just unbelievable. I believe that you need African investors. 
Correct. Yeah. We prefer African investors. <laughs> yeah. So if you are an African watching this video and you really want to invest in their business, I'm going to leave their contact there. Correct. Reach out to them. But hey, if that investor come, I need my percentage. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think I'm talking about percentage too much. Today. Yes. That is not so what am I. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have a final message to yeah. Africans watching us, all that message be uh, so. Let her thank, you for, thank you for this opportunity you're giving us on your channel. Yes. As as uh, Tongwe said, I used to to work abroad. I used to work in Asia, and when I had the opportunity to come back, mm. I came back because I knew that we had opportunity here in Africa. Mm. When I see people, a young African dying in the Medi uh, Mediterranean Sea. Mm. My heart is broken. I'm, I'm always in tears <coughs> because that's much money they're putting in, in that travel where they're ending up in the ocean that could have invested here. So my word, my message to the African youth, stay here. If you need help, look for help, seek for help. You can reach out to us. We can grow Africa together. And my message to investors, um, we here, we're developing this business. We're trying to make Africa better, producing product that will uh, give another view on Africa. So if you want to join us, feel free to join us. We're waiting for you. Yeah. That's incredible. You want to add anything to it? Yeah, I just want to double up. Um, I just want to double up on what Harold said because the message is along the same lines. Um, I think that as young Africans, we need to understand that the continent has us lots of opportunities. Lots of opportunities. Who knew that you could pick up waste and convert to value? Who knew that you could? I was watching a video of a pepper farmer in Ghana, in Ghana and he yeah. says that he's, he's done oil and gas, he's yeah. done real estate, and he said pepper is the most profitable business yeah. he's done. We were all shocked because we watch your videos all yeah. the time to see yeah. if we yeah. can have yeah. other ideas. We're totally shocked. What is this guy talking about? When he threw out the numbers, yeah. we could not believe it. $1,000. Exactly, yeah. from pepper. Who could believe? I would never have thought about investing in pepper. That's yeah. crazy. That's so, as young as Africans, we really need to look around us and see the wealth of opportunities. I watched a video of Akon, the, the, the hip-hop artist. He said, um, black Americans should come to Africa because if you want to be a billionaire, come to Africa. It's a green market. Yeah. There's green opportunities. He said, if you want to be a billionaire, start any business and five, from, five years from now, you're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. So I think young Africans should embrace the opportunity that we have at our disposal. But also, uh, a quick message to investors and governments to create a conducive environment for entrepreneurship. The reason why most young Africans just think about working for someone is because we do not have the most conducive env uh, uh, you know, environment yeah. for entrepreneurship. And if such an ecosystem is created, it's going to lead, lead to the growth of more entrepreneurs in different areas. There are lots of young people with brilliant ideas, but they do not just have a nurturing environment that is conducive for their growth. So yeah. investors and governments can really... Uh, have a thought about is that, that a major challenge that you guys have been facing so um that that's one of the challenges so if i have to highlight a few the first is it's funding right now we're doing everything from our pockets we don't have any investors no government support but we really wanted to start like that to prove that we are doing something we believe in and once we can show people that it's a bankable business then perhaps investors will be more than happy to run after us and maybe even the government and invest in in such a solution um, but another challenge is really an environment that um, um, really fosters the growth of entrepreneurship. We have lots of roadblocks, yeah. even though it's a social business, yeah. sometimes yeah. you have obstacles, yeah. right? So, for instance, you're guiding the coconut waste, but you have to pay a license to gather the coconut waste. You have to pay a license to process waste. You have to pay the same fee that those who log woods pay because they say you're using forest resources. But this is waste. But this, was, this, this was, is waste that yeah, you pick up the trash site. But you need to pay waste. the same certification yeah. that those who log wood is considered as a forestry product. So everyone consuming, using, leveraging forest resources needs to pay for this certification and this licensing. And we have to uh, wow. pay for those. So that this is social enterprise that should even be having tax exemptions yeah. and exemptions from all these things, you know, and... So this, this are some of the it's a, it's a tall list, but you know, we can go all day. <laughs> if you had a chance to change one thing in Africa. It's a mi be? mindset. That's the only thing that needs to change. Mindset. Yeah. The, wealthy, the wealthiest people are in Africa. It's mindset. The average African thinks we are not good enough. Thinks that even them are not good enough. That's why an average African is happier working in a restaurant, washing pot, not even serving. I remember when I got to the UK, I wasn't even good enough to serve. 
I worked in a restaurant and they put me in the back to wash pots because I wasn't good enough. I wasn't looking, I mean, I'm a black guy, so you don't, <laughs> you don't want to put me in front of your white customers. So, 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 so I wasn't even good enough to sell. So all my, 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 my white uh, classmates, all those from um, Latin America, they would serve and we, the black guys, would be put in the kitchen to wash the pots. So, but the average African is happy to do that instead of coming back to Africa and being an entrepreneur or a manager yeah. in an international company. Not just entrepreneurship, really. You can come back and still work for a great company. I came back and I've worked for four Fortune 100 companies. Mm. You know, uh, great mm. companies from Bosch to Caterpillar, big companies, global companies, because I came back and like, I decided to venture into entrepreneurship. So we're not saying that when you come back, you can only do entrepreneurship. But that mindset, so if there's one thing I'm going to change, one thing, it's only the mindset. If the mindset changes, Africa will change. Those who are changing Africa is because they have a different mindset from the average African. And just to add to that, um, I think what he's saying is very, very important, the mindset. First of all, Africans are not really, we don't, um, uh, maybe it has changed now a little bit, but yeah. pushing our brothers and sisters. All right. Yes, pushing, oh, yes, going <laughs> together ahead. Yeah. We feel like we what like we produce in Africa, we, we feel like it's not good enough. Yeah. So we should, we should um, bring in or support another product from in, from outside instead of pushing the one that is inside. Right. So I think that is the first thing. We, we really need to know how to support each other. Right. Have confidence in your brother, in your sister. Have confidence in what is produced in your country, in Africa. Right. And I think with that, we can be able to change the world, change, I mean, collaborate more as right. Africans. And, and, and not fight over who has the best. <laughs> the best in-law. <laughs> who, who is the best in-law? <laughs> of course, I'm worried. <laughs> who, who fight about who has the best job? Like, it's, it's crazy, but um, I'm so proud of you all. Thank and you. I just want to tell you guys that Africa is proud of you too. Yes. And the product is here. It's available. And believe me or not, right. it's by force. And they know it. Yes. I don't beg. Because I'm telling them, I built a brand that it's all about. It's by force to support an African. Listen, they tested me yesterday. Right. I was leaving the country. I mean, right. yesterday. And you say, hey, but I was like, I'm hey, going to stay. I'm going to stay. <laughs> yes. Just to move there. And I had yes. 10 hours drive yeah. to yeah. Accra. Yeah. Yeah. Just for you. This is right. how we need to. It's like, I'm going to book your hotel. Yes. Like, Stop what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Just let's do this. Yeah. You know, so yeah, we made it happen. This yeah. is how Africans need to support this is each it. other. And this is it. believe me or not, they will support you too. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and see, they are in the factory. So. Oh, you're of course. Of course. Of course. The chocolate factory. Why not? Oh, they might, uh, oh, they might, uh,